Good evening, and welcome to St. Christopher's, wherever you may be. My name is Andy Elmhurst, and it's my honor to serve as the Director of Music here. Behind me is a 1960 20-rank Cassavant organ. It was originally built for and installed at a church in St. Catharines, Ontario, before moving to St. Christopher's in 2006. At that time, it was given an inaugural recital by John Tuttle to a standing room only church. Tonight, I'm the only person here. That's a testament to how much our lives have changed over the last seven or eight months. And that's what I hope to explore a little bit tonight. Specifically, we're going to view the COVID-19 pandemic through the lenses of mourning, comfort, hope, and victory. The first piece I'm going to play touches on the theme of victory. It's called Paraphrase on a Chorus by Handel by 18th century French organist Alexandre Guimont. The chorus is called See the Conquering Hero Comes, and it can be found in Act 3 of Handel's oratorio, Judas Maccabeus. That oratorio tells the story, as has been told many times, of the Jewish peoples' persecution by a foreign power and their eventual release. Many of you will know this tune better by the name Thine Be the Glory, a popular Easter hymn.
The second piece on tonight's program is meant to be comforting. It is a piece by the living English composer Paul Ayers. It's called Trio on Each Day and Hey Jude. Let's unpack that title a little. A trio is a piece of music for three musicians, and actually this piece is also arranged for string trio. The organ, however, is uniquely suited to play a trio because the feet can handle the cello or bass line and each hand can play a melody. In this case, one of those melodies, and I'm going to butcher this, is Ich stehe it einem Füße im Grabe, which translated from German means I am standing with one foot in the grave. It's a melody written by Johann Sebastian Bach and while you may not find the words, I am standing with one foot in the grave, to be particularly comforting, it comes from the early Lutheran belief that in death there is freedom from the trials of earthly life. Paul Ayers pairs this melody very cleverly with the Lennon-McCartney tune, Hey Jude, which opens iconically with the line, Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better.
The next piece on tonight's program is the Prelude and Fugue in E flat by Bach. Bach is one of the very few people in history who had the capacity to write a piece of music like this. I'm referring particularly to the second part of the piece, the fugue part. It is a rare example of what's called a triple fugue, wherein Bach, not satisfied with a mere fugue, writes three complete fugues that eventually get woven into one glorious finale. The melody present in all three fugues is well known in the Anglican Church as the opening line of the hymn, O God, our help in ages past. That text is a poem about God's protection for humankind spanning the entire length of our history. The fugue is, of course, preceded by a dignified prelude, which is episodic in form and somewhat lengthy.
You know, I happen to really like all the music I'm playing today. That might seem like a given, but it's not always the case, especially when one is trying to create a well-balanced program. Still, out of all the pieces you'll hear tonight, the next one is my favorite. It's called Elegy, and it's by the mid-20th century English organist composer George Thalben Ball. Elegy is a word taken from classical poetry that means some sort of serious reflection, usually on the life of someone who has passed away. This piece was not originally written as an elegy. Indeed, it was originally not written at all. It began life as an improvisation at the end of an evensong service that was broadcasted by the BBC. During World War II, the BBC aired an evensong service every day. On this occasion, the service ended early and the organist needed to fill a few minutes of space. The next piece of music was what he played. He didn't write it down until weeks after the performance when he began to receive letters from listeners telling him how much they had enjoyed his piece. By all accounts, George Thalben Ball was a brilliant organist. But in this instance, it is especially remarkable that anyone could invent and develop such a beautiful melody on the spot. The video for this performance features some pictures of memorial plaques from around the church. The first two are found on the organ console behind me and refer to an older St. Christopher's pipe organ that was installed as a war memorial.
The final piece tonight is also about victory. It's entitled Introduction in March from the Battle of Britain Suite by William Walton. It was originally written for orchestra to be part of the soundtrack in the 1969 film Battle of Britain. In the early days of the pandemic, I drew parallels between the effects of lockdown and the effects of Blitzkrieg in the summer and fall of 1940. Mainly that, in the face of a common threat, both societies, now and then, unite to become places where restrictions on daily living are embraced in the name of working together. I just saw all around me an air of increased social cohesion and just plain friendliness with people I saw at the grocery store or on the sidewalk. I have to admit I don't see as much of that anymore. Maybe I'm not looking. I hold out hope that we can learn lessons from this pandemic and perhaps, like much of Europe did in the decades following the war, build a more peaceful and equitable society.
Well, I have to assume that I'm getting a standing ovation. In fact, I have to admit it's a little weird feeling like I'm speaking to no one or like I'm speaking to you four days in the past. Nonetheless, thank you for coming tonight and I hope you've enjoyed the music. As I was saying before the last piece, this pandemic does give us the opportunity to make deep systemic changes towards a more interconnected, just, and compassionate world. St. Christopher's is actively engaged in this work on a local level. Throughout the past seven months, we have been able to continue providing to the people around us who face food insecurity. We have continued to keep parishioners connected with online services, frequent communication, and phone calls. We continue to advocate for the disenfranchised, and we continue to share God's message of comfort and hope through music. There are, of course, costs associated with this work and this recital in particular, including organ tunings, the purchase of video editing software, and countless AA batteries inhaled by the cameras. If you wish to show your appreciation for tonight's performance in a concrete way, you can visit our website, stcb.ca, and click on the Donate button in the top right-hand corner. Or, if you prefer, contact the church office for information on other ways to donate. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this musical offering, and I thank you for your time tonight. Good night. <laughs>